Improving team performance is really, really, really important for leaders. Every team has the potential to achieve great things, but reaching peak performance requires intentional effort and strategies. So how can we tap into our team's full potential and ensure everyone works effectively towards common goals and that they are as productive as possible? Hi, if you don't know me, I am Barika from Simply Unique Coaching, and I have been leading for over 15 years. I've led more than 18 teams, and I love to teach people about leadership as well as professional development skills. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the key strategies to help you improve your team's performance. And as a bonus, I'm going to include tips and strategies for strengthening the performance of your remote team, because that is a big topic today. I am currently working with a remote team as well as sometimes in-person teams, so it is definitely something different as to how you will relate to a remote team as well as an in-person team or a hybrid team because I've had that as well. So first of all, let's talk about why is improving team performance important. The first reason is that it's going to help you achieve goals efficiently. So teams that are having that high performance, they are going to get things done quickest, the fastest, and the best way. And that's what we really want to have coming from our teams because they are going to get to the goals, but they're going to get to the goals in the best way that they know how. And when they have that synergy working together, then it makes it go really, really well. Because there are some teams that are on the struggle bus and they will get to the goal eventually, right? But we want to make it as effective and efficient as possible. What does it look like for a high-performing team to actually complete their assignments and goals in an effective manner and in a productive manner? You're going to see team members that are aligned and working cohesively and the projects are going to be completed on time and they're going to be a high-quality product, right? It's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. It's not going to be sloppy. <laughs> you know, they're going to do their best and it's going to make the team shine. It's going to make you shine and it's going to make your organization shine as well. Next, high performing teams tend to be more satisfied with their jobs. And so they enjoy doing work because think about it, if you're on a winning team or you're on a team that you feel is making a difference in the world, then you are inspired, you are motivated, you are ready to go get it and get it done. And you're ready to do it with your coworkers, especially if you enjoy working together and your coworkers work just as hard as you do, then that is the team that you want to be on. So those kind of teams, they don't like to, to slack. And if somebody gets hired onto the team that's a slacker, they're not going to do well. They're going to either be on the outside or they're just going to have to join what the other team members are doing in order to see success and to be taken in and embraced by the rest of the teammates. High-performing teams don't like slackers. Also, when we improve team performance, we are going to see innovation that's going to take place. And that is something I talk about in a lot of my videos. Like people really don't realize that that innovation comes from happy teams and it comes from teams that are able to be creative. So they have to have a little bit of flexibility to be able to have that creative spurt and to be able to ensure that they are also infusing the organization with that. And one of the sayings I like to say is, if you want your organization to avoid going the way of the dinosaur, then we want to have that innovation coming in from our team. So we want to have those high-performing teams that are helping bring those ideas, that are feeling like there is open communication, that are feeling like they can come and talk to you as a leader or talk to their team members or talk to even some of the other individuals in the organization without being chastised or looked down upon or getting put like a lot of pushback like sometimes we can't implement what they want but we can at least hear the idea and see if there's something we can glean from the idea because we at least want the ideas flowing and every idea won't be accepted but we want them to still try we want them to think we want them to be critical thinkers so next we're going to talk about strategies to improve team success first of all absolutely positively to have a high performing team we as leaders have to be clear on what the expectations and the goals are and we have to be clear to it to the point where our team members can repeat it back to us in a way that we know that they understand. And so that's one of the things I have seen leaders sometimes do. They'll say something and they think that they've actually communicated and they really haven't communicated because if the other person is not able to come back to you and repeat what you have said to them, you know, then they really didn't get it. They they may have heard you or they, I don't know if it's like, listen, they they may have listened, but they didn't hear you or, you know. Basically, the communication didn't take place. So you may say, well, I told them two or three times. Why didn't they get it? Because they, they didn't get it. You got to make sure that people get it. Why do you think that all these companies keep advertising and advertising and advertising? Because they want to make sure you get it. That's why you see the same ad on social media all over. You know, you search for something one time, and then it's like boop, 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 popping up all the time, right? Because they want to make sure that you get the fact that, hey, this is the company that's going to help you with this problem. Also, when it comes to setting clear expectations, we can use tools like job descriptions, performance metrics, and regular check-ins to maintain clarity. 
I definitely do all of those things, believe in job descriptions, believe in using metrics, because I want you to see what success looks like. Um, I don't play about that kind of stuff because it, it needs to be crystal clear so that if there are any questions, any concerns, then they are easily um, clarified because everything is in writing. And so there is no room for misunderstanding. And if I do notice that something is missing, then I go in and update it and tidy it up and make sure that that is in place so that everything is clear. And I do the check-ins to make sure that the team members are doing okay, see if they have any questions. Um, because I always believe that people already are thinking what they're thinking. So it's better for you to know what they're thinking than to guess what they're thinking or to assume everything is okay and it's not. So by asking questions and doing check-ins, you can definitely get that information from your team members. Also, as I mentioned before, we want to have those open lines of communication. We want to have that free-flowing communication going, whether it's verbally, whether it's written and like email, text, whatever, uh, voice recordings, however that communication happens between us and our team members, we want to make sure that that is occurring. We don't want to overkill. We don't want to have unnecessary meetings and we don't want to waste people's time. We don't want people wasting our time either. I'm just going to be honest. But we also want to ensure that we have the things in place to ensure that the team is running efficiently. When you're working with people, people need to connect. And in connection, that is where we make sure that everything is clear and everything is going the way that it should go. So we should, as leaders, hold regular team meetings, encourage feedback, giving and receiving feedback. I am a strong believer in we should be able to give feedback to our team members. Our team members should be able to give feedback to us. They should be able to give feedback to each other. And all of us should be also able to receive feedback. And that is something that has to be taught. I actually have like a $10 course. It's not even expensive on how to give and receive feedback. And um, in it, I just talk about, you know, how to do it as a leader, how to teach your team how to do it, and how as a leader to give feedback to your boss. Because there are some times when you would need to give feedback to your boss. So knowing how to do that skillfully is going to be important. We also want to address issues promptly to ensure that we prevent any types of misunderstandings. And then the third strategy for being able to help improve our team performance is providing opportunities for development. So I am a big proponent in investing in your team's uh, professional development, even in some of the things that I'm doing with the remote team. I build in time for professional development because I want you to continue to grow. I do not want you to get stagnant. I do not want you to get mainly stagnant. Like I prefer for you not to get bored, but I definitely don't want you to get stagnant because I am a person that's in continual growth, like literally always watching something, listening to something, attending an online class, or doing whatever I can do in order to ensure that I'm continuing to grow as an individual. So since I'm that way, I want my team to grow. Listen, I don't play about that. <laughs> like you saying, don't park here. Let me just say it like that. Don't park here. Like don't say, okay, well, I'm successful in, in the last six months, so I can just park. Here. No, 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 no. Au contraire, mon frere. Au contraire, mon frere. Let me tell you, because everything is always constantly changing, especially with technology and, you know, differences in uh, society and all these things. So we have to stay on top of it because things are changing. They're ever changing. Like remote work was not as big of a thing, you know, several years ago as it is now. So that's an area where I'm looking at different things and technology. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. And to help encourage professional development on your team, you can offer training programs or have them look for training programs that they're interested in workshops, and other opportunities that are going to help them advance their career or enhance their skill set. And also we want to measure team performance. That is a big deal. Like, because I know that there's some leaders that it's a little bit abstract to them. Because if you say, okay, well, how's your team doing? If they're not able, if you're not able to provide data or if they're not able to speak to the data, then it's abstract. And there are certain things that need to be concrete, especially when it comes to goals in your team, achieving goals, there needs to be concreteness there. And so whether that's numbers, whether that's a survey, whether that's something, whatever it is that gives you information, because information is going to help you know what is actually occurring. We want to make sure that we're using performance metrics, feedback surveys, regular reviews to gauge team performance and to make the necessary adjustments. Because when we get that information, we know what is working well and what is not working well and what we need to do to improve. We also want to make sure that we have goals that can be measured and that they're specific, that they're clear. And so, of course, many people know about SMART goals, but if you don't know about SMART goals, those are those goals that are specific. They're very clear. They're measurable, meaning that they're, they can be measured. You can see how progress is going with them. They're achievable. They can actually be achieved. They are relevant. 
and like important to the outcomes. So they should be tied into whatever the organization has planned. They shouldn't be something that's completely off course. Um, that's not tied in. Like everything should be tied in. There should be a reason why we're doing what we're doing. We shouldn't just be guessing or just doing something and hoping that it'll work out or thinking it'll work out. And it has nothing to do with where the organization is trying to go or where you want your team to try to go. And it should be time bound. So it shouldn't be like, oh, we'll get there one day. Like it sh should be like, okay, we're trying to get this done within 12 months, six months, whatever it is. And even if you don't achieve it within that time frame, at least you are measuring that and you can see what you need to adjust and what you may need to do differently. But at least there is a goal there, you know, for you and your team. So now we're going to go into our bonus and we're going to talk about how to do this with a remote team. But before we do that, let me ask you, what strategies have you found to be effective in improving your team performance? And how do you keep your remote team engaged and productive? Let me know in the comments. So now let's talk about how to improve performance on a remote team because it is very different on how you lead and motivate a remote team versus an in-person team because there are some elements that are a little bit different. But it can be done whether your team members are in the same country with you, whether they're around the world, whether you're using asynchronous work, which is like, hey, just as long as you get it done by this time frame, I don't care when you get it done, how, you know, you can be up at five o'clock in the morning or whatever because people might be in different time zones and different uh, situations, different countries and all that kind of thing. So taking that into consideration and not being so, I'm going to say hard nosed about having to be done this specific way when it really doesn't. Because there are some things that do need to be done like that, but there are some times when it doesn't need to be done like that. So not unnecessarily stressing people out or trying to do things that are controlling. I'm just going to call it what it is. <laughs> let, learn to let go. So when it comes to remote teams, we should A, utilize the technology that we have at hand effectively. We want to use that to help us facilitate communication and collaboration among our remote team members. And there are tools like Slack, like I had to learn Slack, I had to learn how to use Microsoft Teams, I had to learn how to use Zoom, all of these different things. And I hope that you are learning. I'm going to just encourage you to start to use um, the AI tools. It's going to also be something that you need to be aware of because your team members may be using it and getting used to it. So this is not one of those things where you want to put your head in the sand. Um, not to say that you necessarily have to use it for everything, because I, I still think that there's value in the human brain. AI is cool, but it will never replace the authenticity that comes from a person. That's just that's my opinion. But let me know what you think in the comments. So like, what do you think about AI and all of that as well? Next, when it comes to helping our remote teams improve their performance, we want to make sure that we remain in regular contact with them. Don't just ship them off and, and say, okay, here you go. At some point in time in the future, I'll check in on you if ever. Like, like, make sure that you make it a point to check in with your remote team members. And you should schedule ongoing meetings with them. And it doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every week. Um, with one of my team members, it's like, I think, bi-monthly. I have one that I meet with on a monthly basis. Another one that's like bi-month, well, not even bi-monthly, like every other month. However, there is communication happening in writing in between. But our face-to-face -face meetings, it's like every two months. Because I know people have things to do and people are working remotely because they want to be able to work and enjoy life. And just like, I, do. <laughs> I that is me. That is me. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are having those meetings when we need to check ins and regular contact and making sure that if any issues come up, that they're addressed promptly on both sides, you know, so that we're we're at least sharing what our expectations are. Like, hey, make sure you complete whatever's on the checklist if you're using something like a sign. They might have the flexibility as to when they work on something, but it's like, okay, but I do need it done by whatever deadline I put into Asana. So it's your responsibility to know what the deadlines are, how you get it done. I frankly don't care. As long as it's good quality, as long as it's legal, <laughs> I really don't care. We also want to make sure that we create a sense of community and have those connection points because, again, as humans, we are looking for connection. We are looking for socialization. We are looking to connect with people and our teams perform better and at a higher rate whenever they are actually connected. Now, there is one thing I did think about with this one where you have to be a little bit cautious, but I think I'm going to keep that one for maybe either another video. I definitely share that kind of information inside of like the different programs that I have when I have leaders joining because there's some things that it's like, listen, as a leader, this is the, the great part. This is the backside that you need to be careful about. So just be aware. So if you want to know five things that can make the difference between you having an average team or a high performing team, I want you to watch this video next. And with that being said, make it a great day. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all the things that YouTube likes to help push out this video to other people who may be interested in learning about this content. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. And I hope that you have an amazing week.
Take care and God bless.